Hi guys, my name is Victor Gundele, and I welcome you again to one of our valuation review uh, content. So this time we want to take a look at Dangote uh, Cement PLC, We're looking at the group, and this is a, a Nigerian uh, company. You can read more about them. So what we've done, uh, we've extracted the income statement per audit over the last, uh, so from to FY 2018 to FY's uh, financial year 2018, till financial year 2023, uh, January to December, that's the, the financial calendar year. So this is uh, the way it has been presented in their financial statements, revenue, uh, gross profits, down to profits from operating activities, profits before tax, and we have the profits for the year. And now, this financial has been presented uh, based on uh, standard requirements, right? Uh, but now, when it comes to business valuation and also financial analysis and interpretation. Uh, there's something we really, we analysts, we try to, to, to get, right? And one of it is structuring a financial statement in such a way that it is comparable across, right? You're saying A should be compared to A, every other thing being equal. So uh, based on that, we've gone ahead to uh, restructure the financial statement. Now, for the financial accountants, they do their own financial statements for reporting purposes. Why we analyze valuation analysts, what we do is we uh, create our own financial statement to be able to gain, gain more insights, one, to be able to compare likes, uh, A to A, B to B, uh, right? And such, we really love to see some financial metrics that can help us in doing that. So what we've done is we've restructured it, revenue, gross profit, then we introduce our EBITDA, and then we have our depreciation coming in below EBITDA. So EBITDA is any before interest tax, depreciation and amortization. Then we have our operating profits, and every other thing uh, comes below this. So uh, we expect the core business operations to be covered in, uh, in the upper line, right? Revenue, cost of sales, gross profits clean and clean such that if you take another company we do the same thing we show that we are comparing likes for likes right so uh, operating expenses so what we've done is we've deducted the depreciation that has been added as part of the reporting structure we remove it and created the depreciation and amortization line items separately then we have our operating profits so impairments other income finance income finance cost everything comes below that operating profit. Now, most times we usually restructure this financial income so that we know that, well, because at times you have interest uh, income, uh, you have a foreign exchange gain and some other line item. But because we are not building a corporate full-blown model, uh, we just need those line items uh, that are necessary, that are required to do our proper income approach business uh, valuation. So we've decided to restructure this. So taking it further, uh, because this is Dangote Cement, so if you go to their annual reports, we'll be able to see the breakdown of what is really driving the, the revenues, right? So uh, for yeah, there are some businesses, there are some corporate uh, model that you build such that it's very difficult to break down the revenue. But luckily for us, uh, for Dangote Cement, uh, we've gone to the notes, the account, so let me scroll down. And here we have their uh, revenue. Here we have their revenue driver. So uh, they have their capacity, production thousand tons and this is what they've been uh, this is their capacity over the last period right so we've extracted that we look at the what has been the absolute capacity increment and then the next question is why was uh, why was uh, this increment in this particular uh, period right what, what 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 was the reason behind that then we take a look at the sales volume that they also add, this is also based on tons, so you can see. Uh, so this is the volume increments, right? So in 2022, I think uh, 2020, they had significant increase. 2021, the same thing. Then 2022, they had a absolute, you can see, the reduction. Then 2023, the same thing, absolute reduction. And taking a look at what the volume growth year on year, what it has been, uh, you can see uh, that as well. Then we now take a look at what's the sales volume to the capacity that they have. So which means they are currently uh, operating below their, their, their capacity, right? You can see, but somehow, somehow they've been consistent and maintained the range of 51. 
and the, I think the highest they had was 56 in 20, uh, 2021, and you can also observe that they also increased their, their capa capacity. Now, what we've done is so we now have to take a look at the revenue component. So they have cement and clickers, then they have other, other products. Now, cement and clicker, uh, this is what we have, right? So directly, so just picking the cement and clicker only, and take a look at the volume. So remember, this volume are in uh, thousand, why the cement are in units. So what we've done is we just try to get the average price per ton, right? So uh, the revenue, which is the cement and clicker, multiplied by a million, then divided by the volume to multiply by a thousand, so that this can give us the absolute value in uh, in, in Nera. We also made, uh, so for the depreciation that I showed us earlier, what we've done is we've uh, gone to the cost of sales, or the depreciation that we had it. In the cost of sales, we deducted it, the same thing, admin and selling and administration. So we deducted them from each of the line item. And here we now have our total depreciation being summed up together and created uh, the line item for, for that. So that's the main core driver of what the business has been. And we also take a look at the ratios and the margin of what the business, uh, the performance right over the period. So revenue growth, they really maintain a positive uh, revenue growth, right? And I guess that should be an average of almost uh, 20.4, which, which is reasonable. Then they maintain a cost of sales margin and a gross profit uh, margin, which is, which, is, which is commendable, right? And so it's a mature uh, company. So you always expect to see this, uh, this consistency uh, in, their, in their margin and in their performance. So EBITDA margin, they've also been consistent. However, uh, they had a slight fall in, uh, slight drop in 2022 uh, 20, uh, and 2023. So the precision to revenue as well, uh, their EBIT margin, their profit before tax margin, net profit margin, the CAPEX to revenue, right? A significant drop in 2022 and 2023, then their networking capital uh, to, to revenue. So we have to take a look at what the compound annual growth rates from 2019 to 23, what it had been, and also the average for the key uh, metric line item that, that, that we, we need. Now, taking it further, uh, we've gone ahead into the balance sheets. So what we've done is we've also extracted the balance sheets uh, as we have it in their audited uh, financial statement. So under non-current assets, you can see the line item that we have, uh, right, uh, lease, uh, receivable, receivables, right, prepayment, and the reason why we are, you can see prepayment and all these uh, receivables under non-current assets is because of standard, uh, standard and our standards, uh, the, the, the updates in our standards that kind of define how you categorize certain a line line item, so that's why. So you can see if you come to the current asset, you see you still have that trade receivables, you still have pre payment, and you still have some receivables, right? So under current liability, you also you also see the same thing where you have the same line item. As I said, this is just uh, because of standard and our uh, standard. I said so certain line items should be treated, and because of timing, you put some under here, put the other one, and the other part, and this is their 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 equity. Now this is based on on uh, financial reporting purposes, but for we, as I said, we uh, analysts, valuation analysts, we just like to have our financial statements structured in such a way that it's very easy for us to uh, see those uh, profitability line item metrics needed uh, in making decision, right, and to evaluate the performance. So uh, there are some line items that usual that we give attention to. For example, where you see trade and other receivables, uh, where you see prepayment and others. So. We usually, it's not as if we are auditing what the auditors, what they've done. We, we trust them, we believe them, but they said because of our own objective. So what we've done is we've gone to each of the line item, uh, right? And uh, so the first thing is we, because you know that, as I said, standard prepayment is prepayment, right? It's because of standard, I say, you know what, you just put this under this and under that. But for we, uh, valuation analysts, we just like to stick to the basic, uh, basic rule, right? Uh, general, uh, understanding of, of, of it, saying whenever you hear prepayments, what comes to your mind? Prepayments, sh should it be a current or not current? At the first, definitely, it should, be a it should be a current line item, right? What's the definition of a non-current asset, right? Does it meet the definition? So we just try to 
keep it uh, to the basic, right? And we do that restructuring, uh, back out some line items so we know that, yes, this is clean trade receivable, so which means I can take Dangote Cement receivables and take another cement uh, company and be sure that I'm comparing the true uh, receivables. So we also did the same thing under uh, current liability where we also separate the trade payables, right, and the other uh, payables. So taking it further and I have to create it in our own anal uh, analyst uh, format, right, so that it's easy for us to pick the core thing, right, so so we can compare company A to company A and company B to company B, right, so which means non-current assets. So when we say non-current assets, we just say based on the general accounting um, knowledge, right? Non-current assets, or oh, these are assets that you know based on the definition. So what we've done is we just, so these are the three that actually fall under this, uh, right? Uh, yes, as, uh, so please know that this is also for learning uh, purposes, right? Uh, no decision should be made on this. I might be wrong, I might be right. You might have another view. That's why it is finance. Finance is very, very flexible. Do you think it doesn't make sense? Does it make sense and can you defend what you've done and why you've done it that way. So property, plant, and equipment, tangible rights of use assets, these three forms the non-current assets that uh, are considered. So networking capital, inventory, trade receivable, prepayment, trade payables, yes. Kept it simple as that so that we know that these are pure networking capital. Net debt, uh, every other thing seems to come under net debt, which is the other assets and the other liabilities. So we can see everything and you can see our clean and clear net debt. Now, my categorization might be different from, uh, from another analyst, or might even be different from the uh, management's computation itself, right? They, they tend to know more about their, 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 their business operation and how they categorize some line item. But because I'm limited to information I have here, um, as I said, I can be wrong, I might be right. This is just for learning purposes only. So net debt, and we can have our net assets. So, the equity funding always stand alone, and everything must still balance. My net asset must still be equal to my what? My total uh, equity for the balance sheet. Now, taking it further, uh, just to evaluate with those assumptions, the main assumptions that I need to build my free cash flow, right? Because I just want to do a business valuation. I want to do the review of the business valuation. So please, this is just a review. No decision should be made based on this, I might be wrong, I might be right. So this is only for the learning purposes so that most of our guys that are just coming into the industry, uh, they, they, they can have something, right, that can serve as a guide. Many of them don't really have idea, no one to also mentor them. So this is just to serve as a guidance and to also help them, right? So please, no decision should be made on this for learning purposes only. Okay, right, so uh, the capacity, so this is the assumptions where we compute uh, the, the driver for our five years forecast. So I've taken the last three years. Uh, most times we always prefer the last three years because uh, that's the latest thing, right, that I've incorporated any um, macro or anything or anything that might have influenced the business over the last three years. We believe that is enough. Yes, at times people prefer five years, but uh, with the changes in uh, economy here and there, uh, definitely, in fact, <laughs> most times some people, some people prefer the last two years. But let's look at the three years. So what we've done is we've uh, kept this constant, right? So this is, please, this is just based on my own view. I can be wrong and I can be right. So I believe they should be able to keep that capacity in the next two years, right? Maybe subsequently increase it. And even if I want to be, if I want to be very, very uh, uh, conservative, I might have just kept the last capacity they have constant. But uh, let, let's take a look at that. That 2.4 is just the average of uh, the last three years, even with the one that is zero. But if I take out the zero, I think that the average is supposed to be uh, 3.5. But let me leave the zero. Uh, zero is also a growth. <laughs> All right. So the sales volume over the last three years, this is what they've had. And uh, the sales volume capacity. So, I'm, I, I'm, so I, I've taken the average, right, and I kept that constant, and I believe that for the forecast period. So there are times where we need to create different scenarios to also do simulation uh, to evaluate the outcome. Now, for the average price, uh, this is what the average price is over the last period. Now, 2023, you can see from 2022 to 2023. Uh, that, and this, this also mirror what is, uh, what is happening in, what is currently happening in our country, right? The rise in inflation, the rise in pricing, the F, uh, FX rates, and and, and, and the whole thing. So what I've done is I've extracted the 
uh, the Nigeria inflation forecast for the next five years. And I've applied that in ascertaining what the price pattern would be. Now, uh, yes, yeah, some people might disagree with me. Some might agree, right, as I said, but based on my own, uh, based on my own uh, expected and reliable data source that I feel might, uh, uh, might be fair, I've applied the forecasted inflation rate for Nigeria for the next five years. So now, someone might want to ask, but this might make the revenue to be uh, over forecasted or, or, or something like that. Uh, but but I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. So we're also going to see that and considering the uh, competition of our work that we're also cons that we, uh, going to apply some adjustments here and there. So that alone makes me feel comfortable. And if you come to the revenue growth, uh, the revenue here, which is just the sales volume, right, multiplied by the, multiplied by the, uh, Average price per ton. Uh, this so in 2023, this is what they have, all right? And I feel this 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 is this is fair enough, right? To be candid, uh, re revenue growth of average 16 percent. And we look at the revenue average growth for the last uh, five years that they've had. That's around 20.4, so which is still which is still lower, and 2.6, 3, 3.5, 4, 4 million. Uh, look and if you look at the revenue historical wise. Uh, I, I feel this, this, is, this is achievable, right? Considering what is also happening in the uh, Nigerian economy, increase here and there, costs increasing, and the, the, that increment needs to be passed to customers here, here, here and there. So I, I feel this is, this is reasonable uh, enough. As I said, yeah, I might be wrong, I might be right. It also depends on um, your, own, how you, uh, your own perception. Okay, so the cost of sales margin over the last, so, uh, the last three years, this is what they, they've had, right? Average of 36.6. However, if we look at historical, uh, historical margin, uh, 35, 36, 34, 35, then 40%, uh, uh, which is also a reflection of what is happening in the economy. But I f we feel uh, the economy should normalize in the next period and the business, the management should, also, should be able to also manage their costs, uh, look at their investors' presentation, and those are part of what they've also stated, uh, right? So I feel, um, so I just, what I did was to just reduce it at a 0 0.5 margin so that they'll be back to the range uh, which they've, they've been over the, over the forecast here, uh, at least average-wise, 35.6. So I feel that is, that, is, that is fine. I feel comfortable with that, right? So I said you might have, Another perception, as I said, is, is, is financed, right? So, and also remember for learning purposes only. So, the same to operating expenses, this has been the margin. And I also feel that we also adjust to, uh, keep, to, to keep up with their historical uh, margin, right? So, margin wise, yes, but you can see cost wise, it's also is increasing significantly. So, we are, it's not as if you are saying that the cost will not increase. So, revenue is increasing. The cost is also increasing. Most times, those costs even drive the increment in the pricing and, and, and the thing which uh, later impact the revenue. So depreciation and amortization as percent of revenue. Yes, some people might feel that, no, uh, why are we using percent of revenue? We should have used percent of PPE. So there are different options, uh, the one you feel comfortable with. But for this, I feel the two percent of revenue shows a, a, a reasonable margin. So as such, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping to to that. So capital expenditure, a capex to revenue. So taking a look at the capex historical wise and what the percent to revenue has been. So uh, last two years uh, seems to be a significant uh, drop, right? So uh, I, I'm going. To, I feel I'm, I might adopt this too, considering they are mature uh, company now, right? And I, I'm comfortable with this uh, for, for for now. So if data maybe go to the management and maybe they think, yes, I know they mentioned something about expansion and the other thing, but remember we've not increased our capacity uh, that much, right? So we even believe they are operating below their, their capacity, but they stated here they plan to expand to other countries here, here and there, which may also drive their revenue. But because we've not increased the capacity significantly, uh, we, had, we can't just increase capex uh, per se like that because it's not in isolation. So networking capital, uh, this is what their networking capital has been over the last uh, three years, 
right? And this is also showing what is going on in Nigeria economy and how they try to manage uh, their cash. But however, I feel they should be able to normalize because uh, they have a, a good management that manage their cash uh, efficiently. So I feel they should be able to to, to maintain a good uh, networking capital a position over the forecast here. So now let's go straight to our discounted cash flow. Now, but before we go there, let's go straight to our work computation. Let's take a look at work computation, our weighted average cost of capital. So now, please, this uh, I'm, my, I'm doing my evaluation, uh, the valuation review as at December 2023. So please keep that in mind because valuation date is very, very important. I'm not valuing it as of today. I'm valuing it as if today is 31st December and I'm valuing this business. So which means I'm assuming that all the data that I must include in this valuation must have been as if I today is 31st December, right? My perspective, what my outlook and the whole thing should be based on as if today is 31st December and that's what I've done. So uh, we've considered the risk-free rates. Nigerian 10 years bond. Uh, the beta, so we've just adopted the uh, Damodaran uh, industry. So the, the industry fall under, let's take a look at that. So it's for, so I've selected building materials for their industry, right? And we've uh, adopted their unlevered uh, beta. So, and we adjusted that for the debt to equity ratios and also our marginal rates to get our, uh, to get our beta uh, coefficients for the uh, levered. Uh, bitter, right? So equity premium, Nigeria equity premium is at December, also at December 31st, right? So everything, all the data sources were as at December 31st. We're quite high, so it is what it is, right? So I've not considered small stock premium and firm specific premium. So, because uh, this is a, a already established uh, business, so we don't need to consider that. Firm specific risk premium, I feel their, their financial forecast cash flow is reasonable. Enough, so I've also not considered that. Uh, giving me a cost of equity of the 3.0%, and that's one of the reasons I said uh, I've adopted that forecast inflation rate, right? Even if it's too high, I'm sure my work will be able to normalize uh, everything. So, cost of debt, in fact, I, I'm sure the, if, if this is being evaluated as at today, definitely cost of debt has increased significantly. But as I said, we maintain the standard as if today is 31st December. So, spread above risk. Uh, 2%, we have my below bar. This is also uh, judgmental, uh, marginal tax rates, and that's giving us a post cost, post tax cost of debt of 11%. Then our capital structure, we've also adopted uh, the industry, right? What is obtainable in the industry? Yeah, I know some people will prefer to use MTN uh, capital structure itself, but the, you should always remember the, uh, the old concept of valuation is uh, if I take everything here and I bring and I have another company. Right, I should be able to pull in this same data into their values. So, which means compare. I should be able to compare and be able to make that judgment based on what is obtainable in the in the industry. So that is what we've applied. So, as I said, yeah, if you prefer to use their own uh, Dangote cement, if you prefer to use their own, yes, fine. You can you can decide to, to 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 do that. But I feel more comfortable using what is obtainable in the industry too evaluate them. So giving me a work of 28.6. Some I feel this is too high. Um, some I feel this is too low. Uh, some, are, some are just feel comfortable with this. Right. And now let's go straight to our discounted cash flow. Discounted cash flow. So now here we have the historical. So as I said, as at December 31st. So historical revenue, this is what it looks like. And this is what we are forecasting, So which I feel is fine. Uh, less cost of sales. This is what we have. Right. And up to the EBITDA. Now, for this tax expense, right, uh, there are a lot of adjustments that we do when it comes to this tax expense, but for this one, I'm not going to incorporate that. So if you go to their balance sheet, where a company has, so let's take a look at this, under their assets, so based on, let's go to the one we have in the, okay, based on the audited one. So here, they have tax, they have different tax assets under their non-current assets, and then they also have current tax assets, under current assets. If you now go to the liability, they also have current tax liabilities, right? And there, they also have, I think, okay, so they only have, okay, so they have also have different tax liability under non-current and current. So there are times where we just need to 
make that adjustment. So what we do is we remove this, we remove them from this net depth. So we've included it in the net depth. Remember the whole concept of income approaches. All the line item must be accounted for in the free cash flow. Right. So everything must eat the cash. But for this, just because we've included it in the net depth, there are cases where we really need to build out the depth, right? Because basically, it's not as if we enjoy the tax assets into the perpetual future or something like that. So yes, we can make it like this, but most times there's always a proper adjustment where we do, where we consider that for the uh, tax, right? But for this purpose, we just let's let's. I'll keep it simple. So changes in net working capital is what we have and the capital expenditure. Then we've computed our terminal cash flow by applying the terminal, uh, the uh, long-term inflation uh, forecast for Nigeria as a 2028, which is that 14%. All right, uh, which is what it is. That's, that's the inflation expected forecast. And then we've considered the mid-period adjustments, uh, compute our discount factor, and then we have our present value of all our free expected free cash flow plus the terminal cash flow. And here you can see the enterprise value that we got. All right, uh, I guess this should be in should this be this should be in trillion, right? So yeah, this should be in trillion. So we deduct the net debt. Uh, we also deduct the minority interest, and we have the equity value of three uh, billion. So the outstanding shares, and this give us a share price of one hundred and ninety. Uh, Nera. So now, please know that this is as at December, and remember only for learning purposes. Please, it's based on my own perception. Um, I might be wrong. I might be right. Right, learning purposes. So what I've done is I had to go to Cap IQ uh, to up to check what was their share price as at December, uh, as at thirty uh, first December, twenty twenty three. So this should be twenty twenty three, right? Yes. So it was three one nine point nine. And when I look at the market, uh, market valuation, which is the outstanding share multiplied by that, uh, they got something around 5.3 uh, trillion uh, Naira. All right. So um, as I said, I, I, I did this valuation independently without looking at what is obtainable in the, in the industry. But however, I feel, uh, I feel comfortable with, 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 with what I have. I, I, don't, I don't know why. It is what it is. So uh, yeah, other analysts might have different uh, uh, opinion here and there and, and the things. So in order for me to also make to to make a, a reasonability uh, decision, right? I, I have to take a look at what's obtainable, what are what's the margin in the last three years, right? And what's my own forecast uh, looking like, right? So the gross profits as well, so they should be back to the normal. So EBITDA margin, what the historical was was my Forecast right. Twenty twenty three seems to be uh, interesting, right? We, we we know what's going on in the country, but however, even despite that we're in twenty twenty four now, we know that things are really uh, getting back to normal. So twenty twenty three was more like election period, and then the FX rates increase and just unpredicted uh, thing that that happened and affected most businesses. But I believe they should be back to their uh, they should be back, right? They, they have a great um, management now. Taking it further, I uh, also had to do a valuation simulation. So there's something we call valuation simulation. And here, like, let me just show you. So what I've done is uh, we have our expected, so which is our work and our growth that we've applied. Then a deviation. So I've set a deviation of 2% for both of them. Right? I can even say maybe for work should be a deviation of 1.5. So which means the simulation is giving us almost. So if I keep pressing. So, okay, then I apply the formula of norm inverse rand, just our normal statistic kind of thing to be able to get different results. So if I keep pressing F9, you see that uh, the work, every, uh, the growth will, will always give us different simulation of different work and different growth that can be that can be obtained. So you can see, you can see different, 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 different work so that is higher than what we are. So it's just like it's a deviation, different deviation that uh, this will, 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 will give us. And everything we always impact and affect the enterprise value. So if I keep pressing F now, let's see if we can get a valuation. So, so, so you can even see now. So we're getting a valuation, enterprise value of 5.3, which is almost the same thing with what, uh, what uh, 
we, get, we, we got from the market data capital IQ, all right? So yeah, as I said, there might be slight few adjustments which they've made in their own, and I have not considered it in, in, in my own. But nevertheless, as I said, this is only for learning uh, purposes only. So simulation of different valuation that can be gotten. Uh, so we've simulated it, I think, how many? So I suppose to even simulate almost a thousand, right? But this is just like 100. Uh, so different share price that can be, that can be obtained from, from this for us to see uh, what that is. So uh, this is as of December 2023. Um, I'm sure uh, business are booming. They are picking up their um, infrastructure projects going on, the signing of new contracts, uh, so they need to supply cement to most infrastructure projects going on here and there. So definitely I feel, yes, they, they will definitely perform way better than, than this. But as I said, this is as at December 31st. So anyone looking at what's happening, so I'm looking at it as, as if today is December 31st, right? And I'm looking at the outlook of what has happened, what happened in 2023, the full year, right? So how do I think they might want to respond in the next year? So I've also taken it further and also from CapIQ, uh, obtain uh, EV to EBITDA the last 12 months and EV to EBITDA the next 12 months. So high, low, close, average, then median. So I've just obtained both of them. And what I've done is taken their last 12 months EBITDA margin and look at what the value enterprise kind of look like. And I feel this is, this is fair and reasonable enough. And I still maintain that range of six to, uh, 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 range of five to six for the, mark, for the uh, comparable markets one. So the next 12 months also forms within the range of six to, six to seven, which, which I think is fair, uh, leaving the high range out of bits, right? So uh, this, is, this, is, this is my home. So this is the simulation, and this is the, uh, the, the, main, the main one. So right, as I said, please, I might be wrong, I might be right. This is only for learning uh, purposes. And also a big thanks to uh, Damodano because we have uh, used the data from Damodano, including the industry averages, right, where we've taken our, our, our beta, beta and our debt to equity ratio and also to our uh, ERP, right, country and equity risk premium, which we've selected our country and our equity uh, risk premium. So this is only for learning purposes. So please, uh, no decision should be made on, based on this. And uh, just to show us uh, how this is being done, uh, and for you to be able to pick one or two things and apply it when you are building your own valuation. As I said, I might be right, I might be wrong. Uh, this is only for uh, learning purposes and for knowledge sharing only. So uh, subsequent session, uh, we hope we also take another company and we uh, do a short uh, review and also evaluate what their performance uh, would be and what's the valuation as at the current period. Once again, my name is Victor, and thank you for watching this video.